We're making good progress, and we're hopeful we can get this done really quickly. Um, there are a little back and forth on different issues that different people want, but I don't think those are insurmountable. The fact that uh, um, that we made it so clear that we can't have the shutdown because it hurts so many people in so many different ways, even for a short period of time, was very apparent in the room. And the speaker did not reject that. He said he wants to avoid a government shutdown. So that was very heartening. The meeting on um, Ukraine was one of the most intense I have ever encountered in my many meetings in the Oval Office. The four of us, all together, led. First person to speak was Leader McConnell. Well, the five of us: the president, the vice president, Leader McConnell, Speaker uh, Leader Jeffries, and myself made it so clear how vital this was to the United States. This was so, so important. And that we couldn't afford to wait a month or two months or three months because we, we would, in all likelihood, lose the war. NATO would be fractured at best. Allies would turn away from the United States. And the boldest leaders, the boldest autocrats of the world, the Putins, the Xi's, the presidents of North, Car uh, North, Car North <laughs> Korea. I like the governor of North Carolina, actually. <laughs> uh, the presidents of uh, North Korea and Iran would be emboldened, thinking that the United States was this soft, fat uh, country that lost its way and would take advantage. Let me say this. When I showed up today, my purpose was to express what I believe is the obvious truth. And that is that we must take care of America's needs first. When you talk about America's needs, you have to talk first about our open border. I've been, I believe, in uh, maybe 20-something states over the last several weeks, going around the country, uh, appearing at events with my colleagues, and we're hearing from the American people of all parties and all persuasions and all cities and all states who feel this acutely, they understand the catastrophe at the border is affecting everyone. And it is top of mind for all the American people for that reason. So I brought that issue up repeatedly today in that room and, and again one-on-one -on -one with the president. I think that's our responsibility uh, to bring that up. The other big priority for our country, of course, is the funding of our government. And we have been working in good faith around the clock every single day for months and, and weeks and over the last several days quite literally around the clock to get that job done. We're very optimistic. I, I hope that the other leaders came out here and told you the same. We believe that we can get to agreement on these issues and prevent a government shutdown, and that's our first uh, responsibility. Uh, you also heard, I'm sure, that there was um, discussion about the supplemental uh, spending package, and uh, I was very clear with the president and all those in the room that the House is actively uh, pursuing and uh, investigating all the various options on that and we will address that in a timely manner. But again, the first priority of the country is our border and making sure it's secure. I, I believe the president can take executive authority right now today to change that. And I told him that again today in person, as, I, as I've said to him many times, publicly and privately over the last several weeks. It's time for action. It is a catastrophe and it must stop. And we will get the government funded and we'll keep working on that. So we'll have more for you. Money for budget. All right, that was uh, House Speaker uh, Mike Johnson there addressing reporters after a meeting uh, there with President Biden as he hosted top congressional leaders to discuss the funding uh, of the government as a partial shutdown deadline is looming uh, at the end of this week. Uh, we also saw Democratic leader um, Hakeem Jeffries and Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer. They were out there speaking just before the House Speaker started addressing reporters, uh, talking about meeting with the president and the other congressional leaders. Schumer actually called the meeting on Ukraine one of the most intense of any that he has attended in the Oval Office. He also told uh, Speaker Mike Johnson just to get it done. And you heard the speaker there um, addressing reporters on exactly what he says he is doing. Uh, the, uh, also, uh, Schumer saying to the speaker uh, that history is looking over his shoulder and if he would and he would regret it if he didn't pass the funding for Ukraine. Clearly, 
very contentious situation here as the president called in these top leaders uh, to try and figure out what to do as this uh, deadline is looming come the end of the week. Let's bring in our White House correspondent, Karen Travers, also our Jay O'Brien up there on the Hill for more. So, Jay, um, let's just talk about you. You heard um, Schumer, uh, you heard Jeffries, and now you heard the House Speaker. Um, I'll let you take the floor from here. Yeah, let's talk about the visuals we just saw for a moment, Kira. First, Senator Schumer's characterization of the meeting was that he, Leader Jeffries of Democrats in the House and Leader McConnell in the Senate for Republicans, all made the case alongside President Biden to Speaker Johnson of the urgency of the need for aid for Ukraine, because it's Johnson who is holding this up. The Senate passed a bill earlier this month with aid for Ukraine and aid for Israel and Taiwan. And then you saw Schumer say that. That, by the way, as he walks out to the pool camera alongside his counterpart in the House, Hakeem Jeffries. Speaker Johnson walks out to that microphone alone. He stands there alone. Mitch McConnell is not alongside him. Mitch McConnell and he do not agree on the urgency of the need for funding for Ukraine. And then it's not what Johnson says at those microphones, although he expresses optimism that there might not be a government shutdown by the end of this week where the deadline is. But he doesn't really mention, and if he mentions it, it's only a glancing mention. I have to look back through my notes. Uh, uh, Ukraine. You don't hear much mention, if at all, of any funding for Ukraine, one of the stated goals of this meeting. Instead, you hear the speaker talk about how he doesn't believe that there will be a government shutdown by the end of this week. He believes the parties are close to an agreement, and he talks about the need for border security. And he says to the president that he believes that the president could take further executive action on border security. But he doesn't mention, Kira, one of the stated goals of this meeting, and something the White House has said is a pressing need now, armaments, uh, munitions and military assistance for Ukraine. So, Karen, now what? Yeah, I mean, I think it was notable that the president met one on one with the House Speaker. This was a meeting that Mike Johnson had requested multiple times, and the White House rejected his calls for that meeting. Big difference there from the president in that conversation with all of the congressional leaders, next? and then sitting down afterwards with House Speaker Mike Johnson one on one, a meeting that Mike Johnson really wanted to have, but the White House said it wasn't time for it because they didn't think that Mike Johnson was serious about negotiations or conversations. Mike Johnson, though, made it very clear that he he wants the president to take executive action on border security. The president, according to Chuck Schumer, told him in that meeting that he does not feel that that is a substitute for Congress moving forward and taking legislative action, that nothing could be as strong as what you saw in the bipartisan border agreement. That, of course, is the thing that House Republicans rejected. I also think that when we heard so much focus from the Democratic leaders that came out about what happens next on Ukraine, that is obviously the big priority for the White House right now, that $60 billion for Ukraine. Mike Johnson did not say explicitly that he will put that up for a floor vote. He did address the supplemental package, as he called it, which does right now include the money for Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan. He said that they are actively pursuing various options on that and will address it in a timely manner. But, Kira, that does not necessarily mean taking what the Senate has already passed, which had a lot of bipartisan support, and going forward on it, they could break that up. They could add things into it. They could try to put border back into it. We'll see what that looks like. But the message from the White House has been they just need to take what the Senate passed and pass it. And they feel the support is there to do it if there was just a clean vote on it. Well, the pressure is on. We'll follow it. Jay, Karen, thank you so much. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.